Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Master Paul, very pleased to be joining with you today. It is a Thursday, and to be frank, I don't know what the date is. I think it's about the 7th, but not really sure. But one thing I do know is that this morning we will be talking about something that is certainly books, novels, and libraries can be written about. The subject of enlightenment. This subject matter can, <laughs> it has so many perspectives and possibilities associated with it. But for some of you, what will be shared today will be valuable. I will be sharing what I've come to understand on this enlightenment journey. And it will most likely be a very small facet of the entire possibility. But hopefully that facet will assist you in having a greater understanding than you previously did before tuning in today. <clears throat> the other part of this, of course, is can you reach enlightenment in one lifetime? And we'll discuss that as well and what has been learned along those lines. Now, most of the wisdom that I'll be sharing with you is from my teacher, Dr. and Master Shah, and he speaks about it quite a bit. He has taught enlightenment retreats, but at the same time, there is a lot of wisdom that I can share with you that I have gained in training under several enlightened beings, and hopefully that wisdom will assist you as well. So we've got a lot of people joining today. So welcome Jack Poulton. Aloha. Welcome also to Andy Emmanuel. Thank you for joining. Aloha and welcome to Vanessa. Welcome also Teresa Darling and family. Aloha Heather McNee. Welcome Kathy Arnold. Welcome also M.A. Drade. And Jennifer Hewlin. Welcome Dave V. Aloha Dakota. Welcome Joy. Aloha Teresa. And Shelly Maritza, good to see you here, Shelly. Welcome, Kristen Strachan. Aloha also to Lana, tuning in from Israel. Welcome also to uh, Mariana Huerta. And aloha and welcome to Monica. If I missed your names, forgive me. Facebook doesn't always show everybody's names of those who have tuned in. But I am grateful for your presence and I'm grateful for you clicking on the share button to let other people know about today's live stream. <clears throat> this is a very general topic and a somewhat generic in many senses in that uh, it won't push too many people's buttons. You know, today is, is a, a world filled with instant recordings. You can't fart in the wrong place and people will, will record it and put it on YouTube and, and then you'll be villainized forever. So it's one of those worlds where no matter what you do, you're never going to be right. So uh, everybody has their opinions and they're more than happy to share it. Um, when it comes to enlightenment, hopefully it doesn't tread on anybody's belief systems. It's a perspective and uh, it is a pathway. It is an intention. It is a goal. It is a reason for being here. You know, how many people go through life wondering what is the meaning of life, right? There are many, many, many people that go through those kinds of uh, blockages. And today, hopefully, you'll get some insights on that. Welcome also to Christine Mara. Welcome Sherry Picard. Aloha, Elizabeth Marie. And welcome also Wilhelm Chamuel. Welcome Rena Singh. Aloha and welcome to uh, Shalina, Shalini, and anybody else I may have missed. We'll wait just a few more minutes, but in the meantime, uh, I will share with you that if any of this information is of interest or of value to you, you can learn more um, about this at Master Shah's, <coughs> um, from one of Master Shah's top teachers. They'll be teaching on the Tao Chong Enlightenment, and you'll learn more about that today. Kristen Rojas will be joining us shortly, and she'll be posting the information. <coughs> Excuse me. And welcome also to uh, Teresa Van Murek. So let us connect first, placing our hands in soul light, soul service hand position. 
which is a hand position. It's a hand mudra. We place the, the palms uh, in front of our chest, like a prayer position. We drop the left hand in front of our heart center. The right hand gently pointed towards heaven. This connects heaven into our heart chakra. So close your eyes and let us connect. And I will invite in the beings of light. Welcome also to Ingerborg. <coughs> there are beloved divine creator. All layers of all committees in heaven, divine Tao and source. All of the beings of light serving the planet of the light side, including the masters and ascendant masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, saints, buddhas and bodhisattvas. Angels, healing angels and archangels are individual Heaven's teams guides angels and saints, the soul of beloved Mother Earth, the stars, the sun, the moon, galaxies and universes. All souls serving the light side, we love you all, honor you all, respect you all. I bow my head to each and every one of you. Ask most humbly and sincerely for your presence. And thank you for all that you do. We ask for your presence to assist today in this wisdom and this guidance on enlightenment. Please borrow my mouth and allow me to speak the wisdoms that has been learned in this lifetime in such a way that it assists everyone watching to receive higher wisdom and further alignment to their path to their enlightenment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, love you, love you, love you, honor you and appreciate you. Please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to join with us at this time. So I will chant the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. <clears throat> and this is a mantra. It is a healing instrument and it is a blessing. So make a request. I'll be happy to serve you. And for those that wish to chant along, let us do so to align heart to heart, soul to soul. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, La <laughs> Shang I ping on her she. Shang I ping on her she. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace. And harmony, love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for those that are interested in learning more about that Source Soul song, uh, lovepeaceharmony.org. Kristen has posted it also here. And for those of you that don't know, the song has now been uh, placed into an app. Love, peace, and harmony. So you can download it onto your smartphone or your tablet or whatever. <clears throat> so, what I'd like to talk about today, for those, let me check in with those who just came in. Welcome, Eva. Welcome, Nelson Fiedler. Welcome also to uh, Terry Darrow and Lisa Carter. Uh, Ingerborg, Sherry Picard, aloha, welcome. Uh, to anyone else, if I missed your name, forgive me, I have not seen it pop up. And Kathy Arnold, welcome. Enlightenment. Such a deep subject matter. If I ask each of you what your perspective on enlightenment was, 100% we would have varying degrees of response. So to say that what I will share about enlightenment is the end all and everything would be very foolish, of course. It is one person's understanding. My understanding is based on quite a bit of life experience, having trained with three enlightened masters, um, knowing that they were enlightened after the fact. And one of the things that is beautiful about 
the time it takes to have a greater understanding of enlightenment is that it can change over time. So one of the first things I want to share with you is that if you think you have it figured out, if you think you understand everything or whatever it is about spirituality, you, you've got it wired and you're good to go, uh, definitely wrong from the beginning. There is an ever-expanding opportunity for enlightened beings, those beings that are already enlightened, uh, which you'll come to learn a little bit more about today, <clears throat> they will be the first to share with you that they are constantly growing and learning more. So that's a very important statement. Very important to recognize that the minute we let our ego get in charge of our understanding, we have lost. We are definitely not going down the enlightenment road at that point. So I wish to ask forgiveness to all of you if I in any lifetime, including all, all of the Facebook live streams, everything I've ever taught, has come across as the end-all, be-all, do-all, this is the only answer. Uh, I want to state again that it is opportunistic on a pathway that can serve you if your soul is in alignment with it. And if your soul is not, then by all means, follow anyone that serves your soul journey. Because the, the, one of the things that I have learned is that things enter our life to assist us to move further down the road, hopefully in a positive direction. <clears throat> and sometimes things leave our life for that exact same reason. A lot of us hold on to uh, people and objects and things that, um, that leave. And we just have such great discord and discomfort about it. But very often it's to assist us on the enlightenment journey, is to assist us to move forward. So what is enlightenment? Enlightenment is awakening to the truth of the origination of our soul and our alignment to our source. Why are we here? The awakening to that truth. And it is an ongoing and ever occurring awakening. One of the things that Master Shah shares is in, uh, throughout his enlightenment journey that he has come to learn, the first thing he came to learn was that there is a God. Now that might sound strange to you, but understand that in uh, the traditional Chinese culture where he grew up, he grew up under Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism. And in that structure there is Lao Tian Ye, which translates to old man in the sky. Um, but they don't necessarily say the word God so much in the traditional Eastern teachings. They refer to as, you know, source, uh, different terminologies, um, Buddha, a lot of uh, inf information about Buddha. And so, but he trained under quite a few enlightened beings in China. And he learned very clearly that yes, there is God. And in that process, he learned that, and is still learning, that there are layers of divine. There are layers all the way up to original creation. What does that mean, layers? That means that if I, if I spoke to you and I said, are you the same intelligent, heartfelt being that you were 10 years ago? Do you have the same wisdom, the same intelligence? Is your heart more open now than it was 10 years ago? Do you have more wisdom now than you had 10 years ago? Of course I have more of this. Of course I have more of that. Of course I have grown in my experience. So to say that the divine is complete is to say that we are complete. With every breath you take, with every thought you think, think about this, really think about this, with every thought that person's ugly. Oh, that was wonderful. What a beautiful flower. Oh, I can't believe they did that. Every single one of these thoughts, do you know what happens? Our universe expands. Literally, our universe goes bloop, bloop, bloop. A little bit wider, a little bit wider, a little bit wider with every thought. Now there's seven billion of us. How many thoughts are we having, right? So the universe is expanding. What does that mean? That means that life is expanding, that creator, that which created us, God, is expanding. So God has layers and the layers continue according to us, we are a part of Creator. So one of the things that Master Shah shares is that there are layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of divine. 
that every time he thinks he has higher wisdom, he is given higher and higher wisdom. There is constant layers of higher wisdom being given to those that are on the path. Jesus will tell you the same thing. Buddha will tell you the same thing. All of the beings of light know that there are layer upon layer upon layer of enlightenment. So what then is enlightenment? It is a constant pathway to the return to source. Can one reach enlightenment in one lifetime? One can reach a layer of enlightenment. There are three layers of enlightenment that Master Shah speaks of. These three layers include soul enlightenment, mind enlightenment, and body enlightenment. If you review the educational teachings of many of the great beings out there, they don't speak of these types of enlightenment. And within soul enlightenment, there are layers. Within mind enlightenment, there are layers. Within body enlightenment, there are layers. Welcome Seema, welcome Don, uh, welcome Carl Streener, and welcome Kristen. Thank you for coming. So let's talk about the first layer of enlightenment, soul enlightenment. For the most part, most of us have a comprehension that that's it. Soul enlightenment is enlightenment. We're done. <clears throat> I, in my journey, have read about people that have come to earth, sat on a mountaintop, chanted in, and, and stayed in a place of pure love for somewhere between 7 and 13 years, and then literally uh, timed their dissolve. They, they would tell people, okay, I'm going to dissolve now. And they would time it. I'm not making this up. This has been recorded. And they would time their uh, dissolving. Now, some of them would dissolve into fire. They would just poof, burst into flames. When they left, there was little diamonds left underneath them. Some of them would shrink to the size of a, a child over the course of a week uh, while sitting in a meditation position. Um, you've heard of stories of people disappearing and reappearing. We just think they're stories. These are different examples of different kinds of enlightenment. What if someone disappears and reappears? Hard for us to comprehend. Star Trek stuff. But if it did happen, which is certainly possible, if it did happen, that would be an example of a form of a body enlightenment. There is soul enlightenment, there is mind enlightenment, there is a body enlightenment. What is mind enlightenment? Well, think of the great wisdoms of our beloved Jesus. Think of the great wisdoms of our beloved Buddha. Buddha speaks very often of there are 84,000 ways to reach enlightenment. Master Shah asked Heaven, asked Buddha actually, directly asked Namo Ami Tofu, uh, for many people, little little additional information on Buddha. Um, and I did not know this. I had, to, I had to be taught this. That everybody, all the Buddha statues, everyone you think about as Buddha, when you see a Buddha image, is Shakyamuni Fo. Uh, this is a Buddha of three, four, five thousand years ago. And the one that sits under the tree and, uh, you know, was a, a, a prince and left, uh, left the king and left the, all the goodness of life and went out and suffered and became enlightened. But in this Buddha which everyone talks about, all the religions are built upon, in his deep meditation, he aligned and met original Buddha, which goes by the name Amitofu. Just a little side note for you there. So there are layers of Buddha, layers of enlightenment. So in um, the enlightenment journey, there is mind enlightenment as well. Mind enlightenment. Master Shah has some wonderful uh, <laughs> sentences on mind enlightenment. He shares that it's easier to physically walk up to a mountain and push the mountain two feet to the right than it is to reach mind enlightenment. So it must be difficult. This is another comprehension of layers of enlightenment. How difficult is it to reach mind enlightenment? Well, what is mind enlightenment? We'll go back to body enlightenment in a little bit. We'll go back to soul enlightenment in a little bit. We're talking about mind enlightenment now. What is it? Mind enlightenment is being completely free of all negative thoughts. Can you imagine? 
in the household with the husbands and the children and the moms and the dads and their brothers and sisters and all those people that drive you crazy. At work with all those people that drive you crazy. Walking down the street. And you are completely free of any judgments. No animosity whatsoever. No critical thinking. No negativity at all. Every single one of your thoughts are pure. You are in perfect and pure alignment with source. Your thoughts are source thoughts. Your words are source words. When you open your mouth, literally flowers come out. It has been said uh, by many of the ancient wisdom and teachings, see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil, think no evil, see, speak, hear, think no evil. Why? Why are these ancient teachings? Why do they have the three, four monkeys? It boils down to these are the steps to enlightenment. <clears throat> Everyone says meditate, meditate, meditate. Why? Because we, when we are in meditation, we are giving ourselves the opportunity to align to the source that literally surrounds us in every moment. In every nanosecond, we are surrounded by God, by Buddha, by Jesus, by Source, by Creator. We are surrounded by beings of light. Right now, where you sit, right now, there are hundreds of beings of light around you. Hundreds. Why can't we see them? Because we have not developed our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual awakening enough to feel them, see them, know them. We have five senses. Do you think these five senses are everything? No. An enlightened being has many more senses. We live this physical life using these five senses and we make judgments, criticisms, self-righteous comments because we know I can see it with my eyes. Such ego gets in the way of higher layers of enlightenment. When we meditate, what are we doing? We are stopping the monkey mind. We are allowing the source to come into us. Source is always around us. We are far from source. Source is never far from us. Never. We are always far from source. When we have a dedicated attention to a path, you know, I'm teaching some courses now. Uh, I'm talking to you today about an enlightenment retreat, June 21 through June 24. Uh, some of Master Shaw's top teachers will be teaching this enlightenment retreat. You should join it. When you have a path, when you have a teacher that has no ulterior motive, just wants to help you to clear the negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, just wants to help you to open your heart, you are moving towards enlightenment. There is heart enlightenment. Did you know that? There is soul enlightenment. There is heart enlightenment. There is mind enlightenment. There is body enlightenment. And they are, they all have to be passed. First, you have soul enlightenment. Then you have heart enlightenment. Then you have mind enlightenment. And finally, body enlightenment. Soul enlightenment comes from purifying your heart. How does one reach soul enlightenment? We have to purify our heart. We have to become love. What is an enlightened soul? What does it look like? How do we know we have become enlightened? These are the things that you'll learn more about in that retreat. When we focus on our spiritual journey, we watch our tongue, we watch our thoughts, when we are of service to others, we get feedback. We get feedback from heaven. Things start getting a little bit easier. Things are a little bit better. 
our hearts are more open, we find that we are not as stressed and irritated as we normally are. Why? Because we are lightening the heart. We are becoming more pure in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. What does that look like at the level of soul? Well, for those that have awakened their third eye, they'll be able to actually see where the soul resides in the body. The soul sits like a little meditated Buddha in the body. Some souls are very small, very weak, very thin, and their color is not very bright. Some souls are huge and fat and happy. Master Shah jokes. He says, you know, everybody wants to be thin, sexy. He says, but in the soul world, the fatter you are, the better. Why? Because you've gathered all the light. You are a happy Buddha, so to speak. Your soul sits inside your body. And the soul moves through the body in what's called soul houses. You may have heard them as called chakras, but they're referred to as soul houses in the wisdom that Master Shah has brought to us. And he explained the reason heaven told him to call them soul houses, because he didn't make this up. Heaven told them they're called soul houses. Down here we call them chakras, but that's not what heaven told him. And they said, we call them soul houses because the soul moves through these soul houses on the way to higher layers of enlightenment. With enlightenment, when we open our heart, when we purify our thoughts, our words, and our actions, most importantly, when we move away from selfishness and move towards selflessness through service to others instead of service to self, and we are consistent with that, what happens is our soul creates virtue, naturally. Heaven sees everything. It's actually really disconcerting. <laughs> you know, heaven sees everything. Everything that you think nobody sees when the windows are closed and the doors are locked, heaven sees it. It puts you in a place of uncomfortableness. That's a good thing. It moves you towards enlightenment. So you don't make as many mistakes when you realize that truth. I had trouble accepting that, but it's true. Heaven sees everything. They record everything. And that includes all the good service. That includes all the good thoughts. There, somebody's on your team, your, your Akasha Cricker team. Tick, another good service. Tick, another good thought. Tick, another good service. They record everything. And those are what's referred to as flowers. Heavenly flowers virtue. Those flowers, just like petal flowers, fall down into your Akashic record and they start building up, building up, building up, building up, and you have a bank account in heaven, a virtue bank account. And this bank account becomes fuller and fuller and fuller. The more pure your heart, the more pure your thoughts, the more pure your service. This is the pathway to enlightenment. And along that path, uh, your soul becomes elevated, very blessed. What does elevation look like? It starts moving from one soul house towards the next soul house, from the second or third chakra, moving closer to the heart chakra. Okay? In the wisdom that Master Shah has brought to us, he explains that an enlightened soul, not an enlightened being, remember there is soul, heart, mind and body enlightenment. An enlightened soul sits in the heart center. One of Master Shah's students, Master Francisco, uh, who is teaching, by the way, this enlightenment course that's coming up June 21 through 24. Um, Kristen has already posted a link to it, so look on Kristen's chat. <clears throat> he's one of the teachers, and he's been working with Master Shah for about 18 years, so he's one of the highest teachers of his deep understanding of this far, far, far deeper than I can share with you. And one of the things that Master Francisco shares is that uh, when we are on this enlightenment journey and the soul moves towards the heart center, he did not see with his third eye many people. And Master Shah checked. He asked Kevin, how many people in humanity have reached soul enlightenment? where their soul sits in the heart center. Again, what does that mean when the soul sits in the heart center? That means that 
those individuals, this percentage that I'm going to share with you shortly, those individuals have done enough service, been kind and loving enough, have been free of unpleasant thoughts enough to where their soul sits in the heart center. Do you know what percentage of humanity has reached soul enlightenment? One five, fifteen percent. That's all. So out of seven billion people, only about seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand have reached soul enlightenment where their heart sit their soul sits in the heart center. The rest of us, we might be doing wonderful good things. We might be training with a guru in India. We might be doing our absolute best. But we have, at least at this point, missed the boat a little bit. Meaning, we have not been training with uh, high-level beings that understand how to move you from where you're at to where you would, your soul would like to be. Our personalities get in the way. Our egos get in the way. <clears throat> how do you open your heart more? How do you release the heart blockages? What are heart blockages? What is heart enlightenment? Jealousy. Gossiping. Greed. These are all heart blockages. These are all blockages that inhibit us from having heart enlightenment. Heart enlightenment comes along with the movement towards soul enlightenment. Master Shah asked Kevin, this is when I attended an enlightenment retreat with Master Shah about nine years ago. It was my, my first major awakening. Keep in mind that I had trained under several other enlightened masters, so I had a pretty good grip on things, or so I thought. Ego, right? And when I started training with this master, I was like, oh my God. This person really is, is, is attuned. He's willingly sharing some of the highest level wisdoms out there. And he has no attachment to people's perceptions of it's right or wrong or what their perceptions or judgments of him is. He just wants to serve unconditionally. And he explained that that is the highest path. He asked Namo Mitofu, of the 84,000 ways to reach enlightenment, what is the highest? way to reach there, the fastest way. And he shared that Buddha asked him, what do you think? And he said, well, I think it's service. And Nama Tofu responded, that is correct, my son. He asked uh, heaven, Tao, Source, our Creator. He said, dear God, how many people in humanity have reached enlightenment? 15%. How long does it take the average human being to reach enlightenment? Important question. How long does it take the average human being to reach soul enlightenment, where the soul has done enough good service, the soul has purified enough, removed away from jealousies, greeds, moved away from corruptions of the heart, to reach enlightenment? And heaven told him, listen carefully, three to five hundred good lifetimes, pure service-oriented lifetimes, now, guys, life is like a stock market. We do good, 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 good. Next life we come in, we suck, we hurt people, we take advantage of people, we join wars. Next lifetime we come in, we maybe have another unpleasant lifetime. Next lifetime we come in, we sit on a mountain as a, in a monastery. Next lifetime we come in and we're a, we're a priest or pastor in the Catholic religion and we help people. Next lifetime we come in and we're living a, on a farm somewhere, uh, doing the best we can and struggling. Um, life can be a stock market. Our soul chooses our experiences so that we can clear our karmas, right? From original creation, we were all perfect. Original source was perfect. Had no, you know, original source. Uh, this is just a perspective. You don't have to agree. Ex you know, to said, I want to experience instead of just know the, the uh, purity of love that I am. Poof, expanded itself into billions and trillions and billions and more zeros than you can count. Souls. And we're all an aspect of the one creator. And now we all have been given free will. And in that original expansion, we were all still perfect love. And given free will. Some souls in that free will chose to experiment, doing something against oneness, something against love. 
and that created imbalance or yin and yang. Therefore, the need for rebalance. So what is karma? It is a rebalancing of the imbalance. It's just opportunity on our way to enlightenment. And so when we look at what is soul enlightenment, when we look at what is <coughs> heart enlightenment, when we look at mind and body enlightenment, it is a pathway. Three to five hundred pure, perfect lifetimes where we don't make mistakes, where we are good with all of our thoughts, where all we do is help others. Do you know how many lifetimes it takes to have three to five hundred good ones? A couple thousand? That's why there's only 15% of humanity that has reached that. Probably a lot of them are souls that, that you know, have been here before as very highly level enlightened beings and have come back to help. And so, why then should you attend an enlightenment retreat? Well, you'll learn some of the same things you've learned here today. What's the value of attending an enlightenment retreat? Please listen very carefully. This is one of the most important things you need to hear. It has taken me a long time to comprehend, and I will share it in a couple layers until you get it. Many of you, if I ask you how many have received a healing blessing from myself, from Master Shaw, from one of the Master Teachers, probably 70% of your hands would go up. If I ask how many of you have had like a miracle level healing, probably 50% of your hands would go up. I have done so many healing blessings live like this. Three minute blessing, five minute blessing, people's 10 pain goes down to zero. Da 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 da. I'm not bragging, I'm making a point. How is that possible? It's possible because power of that nature was transferred to a human being, me. I, I couldn't do that stuff eight, nine years ago, no way. But the power to do it was transferred. It's called the Divine Order. Master Shah is a servant to humanity. He has served humanity countless times. His soul is way above the heart center. It's sitting up here on top of his crown. He's came in as an enlightened being and has went further. And in his uh, trajectory, heaven has given him more and more power and authority to serve human beings and to help human beings reach enlightenment faster. So how is it that I can say the words divine order, and from 6,000 miles away, somebody's heart arrhythmia goes away, and the doctors can't explain it. It's gone. On the echograms, they can't see it anymore. Somebody's uh, uh, brain conditions goes away. They can't see it. Somebody's cancer condition goes away. Doctors can't explain it. How is that possible? Simple words, divine order, clear the blockages, it's gone. Science and modern humanity cannot explain it. It is done because heaven can do whatever heaven wants to do. Heaven loves humanity. Heaven wants to see all humanity become enlightened. So they have to send great messengers to humanity to serve. They send Dalai Lamas and other great messengers to humanity, Jesus, Buddhas. And in some of those messengers, they give power to, to help human beings. Master Shah has received extraordinary power to transmit to others what is needed to move their soul journey forward. Listen carefully. Power is the release of virtue. Virtue is good karma. What causes our suffering? Unpleasant karma, right? Our inappropriate negativity, thoughts, words, actions, greeds, corruptions, jealousies, gossips, blah, 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 blah. If any of you can raise your hand and say you've never done any of that this life, then you are already an enlightened being. But if any of you cannot say that, then you have created karma. Things that keep us out of balance and out of alignment with our soul journey, certainly not helping us towards enlightenment. How then do we move towards enlightenment? How then do we enlighten our soul, heart, mind, and body? There is the long way, there is the short way. The long way is what we are doing, beating our head against the wall, watching people like Master Paul talk on these live streams, trying to figure this stuff out, 
And then after the live stream, you go back out there and the boss yells at you and the kids scream and you go out to the car that doesn't start and you look at the bills on the table and stress comes and you say, why am I even here? Blah, 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 blah. So we go back to the old way of doing things. It's hard to keep our head on straight, to keep positive, to move forward in love, peace, and harmony. So there is a fast way. There is a fast way. And if you truly grasp the entirety of this communication today, you will run to this upcoming retreat. You will not waste a second. You will borrow the money to pay for this upcoming retreat. June 21 through 24, the Enlightenment Retreat. Listen carefully. Why? Power is given in order for somebody's lifelong 30-year back pain to disappear, stroke to go away, uh, heart arrhythmia just disappears. In order for somebody's lifelong issues to dissolve, they have to clear their karma. That's what brought it to them. In order for negativity of the mind to disappear, some people have constant negative thoughts. They just can't get rid of it, no matter what. It's just incessant. They can't get rid of the gossiping. They, they just they have to say something bad about that person. It's, it's, it's almost like you know, people have these ongoing incessant problems. It is karma. Trust me, it's karma. It comes to you, it nags in your ear, therefore you're negative. It loops, therefore you're negative. OCD, constantly repeating things, right? Excessive fear, excessive worry, excessive anxiety, excessive depression. Karma, 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 karma. You think it's accidental you have excessive fear, worry, depression? No, <laughs> not accidental. These things have been predicated upon others in previous times. Very simple. How then do we remove it? You re need to receive virtue. You need an injection of positivity. You need an injection of good karma. Do you understand that? It is exceedingly, beyond, 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 beyond exceedingly rare. Beyond exceedingly rare. Where you can walk down the street, walk into a bank and say, I would like to get some free virtue to fill my Akashic record with positivity as if I have done three to five hundred excellent lifetimes. I would like to avoid sitting on a mountain as a monk chanting to serve humanity, please. I would like to avoid being selfless and doing all the hard work to become a pure being. Can I please have that? Here's a couple hundred dollars. And they say, here's your bag of virtue, sir. And you take the virtue and you sprinkle it on your soul and the virtue wipes away aspects, portions of the spiritual debt, the negativity, the negative karma that had been earned by you and your ancestors over the course of all of your lifetimes. And your soul moves up your soul houses to your heart center. With all this virtue comes higher level wisdoms. The release of future pain and suffering. Trust me, all of us will have future pain and suffering unless we do a lot of virtuous things. That car accident that may have been slated for somebody two and a half years down the road that would or could cause significant back injury because of a karma in a lifetime where maybe we had hurt other people's backs, that car accident could go away. Why? Because virtue came into your bank account, cleared some of the blockages, enlightened your soul. Do you understand the almost impossibility ever of that happening, where you can just walk in and say, I would like a bag of virtue, please. This is what I came to understand what an enlightenment retreat is. An enlightenment retreat is the opportunity 
not just to attend and get wisdom like this and far more wisdom. You have teachers like Master Francisco, Master Lore, very high level beings teaching. These, 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 these beings have such wide open third eyes, they can see <laughs> more than you can see in the regular world. That's how wide open their third eye is. And they get very pure messages. They have had power transmitted to them by Master Shah. The same power that can clear lifetime of blockages. They have had power transmitted to them where they can, for a small honor fee, distribute virtue into your bank account, uplift your soul, save you three to five hundred lifetimes of potential suffering. Probably more. If you truly get what I'm saying, you will run, not walk, to that retreat. You can, at you can attend it, uh, webcast or in person. But it is by far the single most intelligent thing you can do in this lifetime. It, that might sound like an overstatement. Trust me, it's not. Master Shah offered karma cleansing. He doesn't do it anymore. He offered karma cleansing. Oh, I want my karma cleared. Everybody scrambles for that, right? But he told all of us for the last 10 years, great, if you can get your karma cleared, great. But it's not as important as soul enlightenment. How many times does he need to say that before we figure it out? The single most important thing you can do for your soul journey. Who wants to come back and suffer again and again and again? Me, sign me up, right? Well, we're going to come back till we become 100% pure light beings, until we have body enlightenment, we're pure light beings. But if you have soul enlightenment, when you return, your future lifetimes will be dramatically different. Not near as much suffering. Doesn't mean you're not going to have some stuff, but certainly it will be substantially, substantially better. This might be hard to understand. I understand that some of you are new. Some of you might be going, what? Somebody can distribute virtue to my Akash records, to my bank account. They can help offset my spiritual debts. They can lift my soul up. When I was watching this 10 years ago, man, I had a, a bald spot on my head from scratching my head going, really? 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 But now I sit here telling you there is no person that I have come across on earth that has been, been given these kinds of, of authorities. You don't have to believe me. Go look at the over 1,000 videos that validate that power can be transferred to others. That, that you know, in, in this wisdom, the reason the back pain went away, the reason the, the heart pain went away, the reason the stroke disappeared, the reason the cancer dissolved is because the karma that originated it was the debt was paid. That's what this wisdom says. So debt, spiritual debt, our inappropriate thoughts, words, and actions are the source of our lack of enlightenment. They are the source of our closed heart. They are the source of our depression, our emotions, our, all of that. You can receive direct blessings through a master like myself. You know, get a blessing for depression, get a blessing for worry, get a blessing to open your open heart. You should get those. Those are exceedingly powerful. They'll help you with your everyday, this life, you know, pains and sufferings and emotional blockages. You need those directly. But the most important aspect of your soul journey is to take care of your enlightenment, to save yourself. How many lifetimes do you have to live to have three to five hundred good lifetimes? Good lifetimes. Because you have to have three to five hundred, like living on a mountain as a monk, chanting to serve humanity, three to five hundred lifetimes like that to move your soul to the higher levels. You must have to live 1,000, 2,000 lifetimes. So if you can attend a retreat like what I'm sharing with you, June 21 through 24, look at Kristen's timeline. She will, uh, you can see the posts there. And drshaw.com, just go. It's on the home page on the bottom left-hand side, drshaw.com. Afford, you know, he, he does charge money to receive this virtue. Why? It's far too deep to explain to you. The short version is, if rain comes down to earth, how does the water get back up? 
water then becomes uh, uh, clouds. It condensates, right? It goes back up for the rain to come back down. And then it condenses and goes back up. Water becomes a gas. Constant cycle. If heaven drops virtue unconditionally down to earth and it doesn't have a way of returning, then there is an imbalance. Yin and yang has to have balance. So why is there a financial consideration for this? Because there is a way to send, condense, and send virtue back up to heaven to say thank you. These are very sacred teachings that certainly you have not earned the, the right to understand. You have to become far more um, educated and moved on the enlightenment path to be given that high level of wisdom. But know that there is a way to say thank you back to heaven for saving people's lives, for creating miracle after miracle after miracle. <clears throat> How do we know our soul has become enlightened? We'll feel better. We won't react as much. We'll feel more open. Our, our spiritual channels will very likely open more. But remember, we only have our five senses to validate. Once you cross over and you go up to heaven and you go through for a review, you know, there will be dancing angels, there will be your ancestors will be dancing up and down, congratulating you for doing the most intelligent thing possible on earth. You can't see it here with your five senses. The most you can expect is that you'll feel better and know that you have made an intelligent choice. Your heart will be more open, you'll have more understanding in a generalized sense, you will be on your way on your spiritual journey. But to assume you can comprehend it with your five senses, no, not realistic. When you move further on your spiritual journey, when you do have soul enlightenment, heart enlightenment, mind enlightenment, and eventually body enlightenment, your spiritual channels will open more. You'll see heaven. You'll know validations. Some people with their spiritual channels can see the Akasha record. They don't even question this entire conversation. Like, oh yeah, I can see it. I can see virtue coming down. I can see the darkness being wiped off the pages. I can see it. You can't, dealing with five senses. Our spiritual channels are blocked. They're closed. When we move to spiritual enlightenment, tons of blockages leave. Our channels can open more. And we can start to not question things because we think we're so smart with our ego and our five senses that if we can't validate it, then it must not be true. Ego. Careful. I encourage you to attend that retreat. I encourage you to attend my 12-week Open Spiritual Channels course. There are still three more weeks available where you can sign up. I just completed the first week. Everything is recorded, so you miss nothing. And currently, until the end of the third week, it's at a half, 50% off. So instead of $360 for all 12 weeks, it's only $180. And so um, you know, the discount code is called MP50 and the percentage sign, MP50 percentage sign. Um, but and call me, Facebook, email me if you have questions. But join these programs. Make a difference in your spiritual life. I will leave you with Master Shah's one sentence secret. The purpose of life is to serve. Well, a couple of one sentence secrets. The purpose of life is to serve. To serve is to make others happier and healthier. We are here as a soul having a physical experience. It's time to awaken enough to move away from this physical experience that's created all these unpleasant emotions and unpleasant sufferings and move towards your spiritual journey with conscious purposeful choice. Because that is the solution to the suffering. So I want to thank my spiritual teacher and father, Master Shah, all layers of divine down source, all the beings of light who have offered their service here today, allowed me to share with you in such a way. I encourage you to join this course. Uh, Master Shah's, in, uh, this enlightenment retreat is taught by Master Shah's top students. They have received power and authority to distribute enlightenment virtue. It is priceless, 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 priceless a million times. Okay? I love you. I thank you. I thank all of the beings of light. I ask all of them to respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. We'll see you on Tuesday next week.